Now I gotta start this video off with a quick, fun little side story. One that'll actually relate back to the topic at hand, as you'll see soon enough. Anyway, as you've probably already heard, Damon Lindelof was recently fired from the Ray movie, a movie he was set to write or had actually written an initial script for. One Lucasfilm didn't like, so they parted ways with him and brought in Stephen Knight to replace him. And a few days ago, he, Lindelof, did an interview with Esquire magazine where he was asked about all of this, and asked specifically if, despite this setback, if he'd still like to do a Star Wars movie someday, and he responded by saying, Will I get back in line outside the club and try to get back in again? Of course, Star Wars was the Alpha and the Omega. It's the first movie I saw in a movie theater. I love all of the storytelling in that world. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Or again, again, try, as Yoda would say. And though I generally don't like to kick someone when they're down, I feel like I gotta point out that, um, that's certainly not what Yoda would say. Not at all. I mean, arguably Yoda's most famous line in the films is the exact opposite of that saying. No. Try not. Do. Or do not. There is no try. And look, I don't know if he was intentionally trying to be funny or ironic by saying that. We only have this interview in the written form, so he may have been a little tongue-in-cheek, if you will and winked at the interviewer as if to say, I'm trying to make a joke here and I know I'm reversing Yoda's famous quote. And that, of course, doesn't come across in the written word, and the writer of this article didn't make a note of his attempted irony. So for all we know, he was being serious. I mean, if I'm the president of Lucasfilm and one of my writers said something like that to me completely unironically, I'd fire them on the spot. And I'm not being a little tongue-in-cheek. I'm being very serious. I would literally fire them. Because one of the biggest problems with Star Wars as of late is writers coming in with either no solid understanding or care for the lore, and just making stuff up that conflicts with or completely contradicts things, especially as it relates to the Force, which is the most important stuff to get right, I would argue. Case in point, the ending of The Rise of Skywalker, where Rey hears the voices of dead Jedi speaking directly to her and then claims to be all the Jedi. And I... I'm the Jedi. No! And though yes, some Jedi do go on to become Force Ghosts, some receive the Great Gift as it's referred to in the Clone Wars animated series by a Force Priestess. He is to teach one that will save the universe from a great imbalance. For this, the Great Gift will be his. And they receive this gift after extensive training to become one, as we see Yoda begin in the Clone Wars and tell Obi-Wan about at the end of Revenge of the Sith. Training. Though apparently not everyone who becomes a Force ghost needs the training. We see Anakin become one. We see him receive the great gift for, I'd assume, fulfilling the prophecy in the end and destroying the Sith, or sort of destroying them. Somehow Palpatine will, of course, return. We also then see Luke and Leia become Force Ghosts, and though it's not impossible, if not likely, that Luke trained to become one at some point, I'm not so sure about why Leia became one. My only guess is she uh, must have got in on the family pass or something, which I'm more or less okay with and likely means that Ben Solo got in under that same pass, despite Rey not seeing him at the end of The Rise of Skywalker. And I know many in the Raylo fan community out there are hoping that is the case, that Ben is not really gone. I even once heard or saw a theory accompanied by some interesting fan art of Ray being impregnated by the Force Ghost of Kylo Ren or Ben Solo. So yeah, that's a, that's a thing some would like to see, I guess. But anyway, before I get lost down that dark path, the point is that most Jedi, when they die, they simply become one with the Force and lose their consciousness in the process. And they're more than okay with that. They even pretty much celebrate it. They celebrate that they will join with the Force when they die. And it's only a handful of them, either because they were trained or got in on that technicality on the family pass, that retain their consciousness and can communicate with the living after they die or um, shoot lightning bolts at trees from time to time. But um, anyway, that should mean that many of the Jedi that spoke to Rey at the end of The Rise of Skywalker shouldn't have been able to do that. However, I always just kind of tried to chalk it up to being some sort of echo in the Force that she heard and was trying to sort of communicate with or hear, as she talks about at other points in the movie. 
She's trying to hear the voices of the Jedi who came before her. Be patient. I'm starting to think it isn't possible to hear the voices of the Jedi who came before. Which is something no other Jedi has ever talked about doing because they knew, or thought they knew, it was impossible. So anyway, sure, Rey was hearing some sort of echo in the Force. That's fine. That's not that egregious of a lore break. It's one I was more or less willing to let slide. Even Rebels implied that Kanan had left some sort of echo or part of himself behind that Ezra was able to, in a sense, contact through the Lothwolves. But in that case, we were talking about not only two Jedi who obviously knew each other, but a master and apprentice. There was a reason for some sort of connection to possibly exist or linger in that case. I even kind of liked that one, considering how powerful and important the bond between master and apprentice is for Jedi. That it's the antithesis of the Sith rule of two in many respects. Because whereas a Jedi Master looks forward to the day they teach their apprentice everything they know and are surpassed by them, that's a day a Sith kind of fears. The Master Sith is basically only using the apprentice as a tool, and the apprentice one day seeks to kill and replace the Master with the help of his own apprentice that he'll then go on to exploit. Every time you get two Sith together, you have the, the, the Master, you have the apprentice, and when, uh, the apprentice is always trying to recruit another apprentice to join with him to kill the master. So yeah, Rey hearing some type of echo in the force that helps encourage her, that's not the worst thing ever. I'm okay with something like that. Some part of an individual Jedi enduring as long as that something really is just an echo within the force that has no real sort of power or influence, you could say. That it can maybe usually only be felt by those who knew them in life, like in the case of Kanan and Ezra, or the case of any master and apprentice. That only Force ghosts can truly, or in any meaningful or direct way, interact with the living. That, no, no one's ever really gone, something of them always does remain. But, according to the new Star Wars Timelines book, encouragement from the Echoes of Dead Jedi was not all Rey got in that fateful encounter with Palpatine. She also got all their power. She really was all the Jedi. Because I guess all the Jedi who have ever died or ever lived have been storing up like a big giant battery in the Force for her to one day draw upon. And that leads to all sorts of fun and interesting questions, not the least of which being how did the Jedi not know about this battery before all this? How had they never felt it when reaching out and into the Force? Or heard even a whisper from it if, with multiple voices or all previous Jedi voices, it could literally talk to them. Heck, why didn't Yoda just channel the battery when he faced Palpatine in Revenge of the Sith to avoid everything that happened next? What were all the Jedi up to that day? Why didn't all of them get behind Yoda and stop Palpatine there and then? Why wait all those years for Rey to do it and for untold levels of suffering to happen across the galaxy under the rule of the Sith? Or how about the really big question, that being, what the hell is the point of the prophecy of the Chosen One? Why did the Force purposely have to create someone to destroy the Sith if the Jedi had been storing up their power for a thousand generations? I mean, sure, Rey being the one to ultimately destroy Palpatine kind of already ruins the prophecy, but this, all the Jedi thing, puts a big old cherry of mockery on top of that. This is just one of the dumbest things ever, that once upon a time, the story ended with Luke throwing his saber away and refusing to fight, and that led both to him becoming a Jedi and to victory over the Sith. But now all the Jedi have come together to literally fight against and melt the face off of Palpatine, and that's how they now win. This is what makes Rey a Jedi. Getting unlimited power is a Jedi thing now, I guess. I mean, I understand the sequels are hard to fix, I really do, that not a lot of thought was put into the lore or just the logistics of all of this by those who wrote the films in the first place, which is what I was talking about at the top with Damon Lindelof, that assuming he didn't realize the irony in what he was saying, they, Lucasfilm and Disney, keep hiring people who don't understand even the basics of Star Wars, much less the ins and outs of the deeper lore and deeper meanings, and they can't figure out why fans keep getting upset and calling them out and not liking their content. But even though I know and begrudgingly accept that they want to embrace and fix the sequels, things like this really don't help. They should have just left it as some sort of echo in the force that Rey was hearing and was motivated by it. 
not literal strength from dead Jedi. And if they wanted to go this route to some degree, the only one there lending her some strength should have been Anakin Skywalker, and maybe the other Force ghosts as well. Make it where he, in a way, was still the one to fulfill the prophecy and destroy all the Sith, that he had to do it through or within the Force itself after he was dead. Make that what he had to do all along, and that's why he had to become a Force Ghost, that this had always been his endgame and the other Force Ghosts were, I don't know, needed to help him either become a Force Ghost when he died, considering he had no training, and because they'd all been a big part of his journey as well. I mean, yeah, that's still a little cheesy and undoes what was already a great ending in Return of the Jedi, but at least it would have included Anakin and made more sense when looking at the lore that already exists. More sense than Rey having unlimited power and killing Palpatine with it once and for all, or until he somehow returns again. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think about all this. Do you think this makes it even worse that she was somehow channeling the power of dead Jedi? Or maybe you feel like this makes sense and makes it better. Whatever you do think, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.